So this is a normal curve. A normal curve is also known as a bell curve, and it's the most useful probability density curve out there. It's going to be our foundation for a lot of the remainder of this class. And as you've already seen, so many things in the real world follow this type of a distribution. Things like heights and weights, IQs, blood pressures, cholesterol levels, the list goes on and on. So we need to be familiar with certain properties here. We need to be familiar with the fact that the mean and the median and the mode, they're all right there in the middle. They're all, um, they're all right here. Um, we've got symmetry about the mean. Uh, you should know that, uh, that this, this curve actually goes forever in this direction to the right and forever in this direction to the left. And so there's always the smallest amount of area between this horizontal axis and our curve. And that's going to have implications when calculating areas underneath the curve using the calculator like we're going to in the, in the coming videos. Um, the, probably the, one of the biggest, uh, biggest things with the normal curve that I need you to be familiar with right now is the empirical rule. This is something that we've seen before, uh, but just to review it, the empirical rule says that 68% of the data in a normal distribution is within one standard deviation of the mean, 95% is within two, and almost all of your data is within three. So we can see this up here. We can see if you take the mean minus one standard deviation up to the mean plus one standard deviation, that's 68% of your data in there. If you take the mean minus two standard deviations up to the mean plus two standard deviations, 95% of your data is in there. I also want you to be familiar with a particular normal curve known as the standard normal curve. So the standard normal curve has a couple of additional properties. It has the additional properties that the mean is equal to zero and the standard deviation is equal to one. So that means if we are looking at, if we are looking at this normal distribution and our mean is zero, if I go one away from the mean, and that is that is one standard deviation, then the number here actually represents the number of standard deviations away from the mean. So if I am at, out here at two away from zero, that's also two standard deviations away from the mean, since one standard deviation is equal to one. So, so that's really important because that tells us all of the numbers on the normal or on the standard normal curve all of the numbers are going to represent how many standard deviations you are from the mean. And those are called z-scores. And so this would be a z-score of two, this would be a z-score of one. Uh, if I came on this side, you would have a z-score of negative one, a z-score of negative two. So you have positive z-scores on the right, negative z-scores on the left. And z-scores are something that we use in statistics quite often for uh, for describing really how extreme certain data values are. Okay, so one of the first things that we're going to do with this standard normal curve is we're going to combine it with what we were talking about in the previous video, and we're going to find areas um, between different values underneath uh, the standard normal curve. Uh, for instance, uh, in this first example, I'm going to call this example, let's call this example A, I want to find the area to the left of a z-score of 0 0.25. And so one of the things that I'm going to do is I'm going to encourage you as you're going through this uh, through this whole module really to sketch all kinds of pictures because um, I think every single picture is going to, it's going to give you a visual that's really going to help organize your thoughts and determine really what you're going to be plugging into a calculator because the calculator is going to be det determining these areas based upon some of that complicated calculus that I was telling you about before. So I would sketch a standard normal curve in a case like this and then say okay let's visualize this standard normal curve and I've got a mean of zero and a z-score of 0 0.25 that means it's 0 0.25 is going to be on the right but that means that you are 0.25 or a quarter standard deviation away from the mean. So that's right here, 0 0.25. And we're finding the area to the left of 0 0.25. So we're actually going to be finding all of this area under here. So you can see I'm drawing this picture, and I'm shading this region, and I know I've got to get all of that area. 
And so you can see that this area is actually going to go all the way to the left. Remember I was saying just a little bit ago that this normal curve actually goes forever in that direction. So I'm going to say that the leftmost number that we're going to go to, since it goes forever in that direction, it's kind of like negative infinity in a way the leftmost z-score if you want to think of it that way. So instead of using negative infinity because our calculators don't have the infinity button, we're going to use negative 10 raised to the 99th power. And then this goes all the way up to 0 0.25. So in the calculator, the tool that we're going to use, it's called normal CDF. And so we're going to go to normal CDF and we are going to enter uh, we're going to enter some of these things and I'll show you the format. So to find normal CDF, uh, we're going to press second and then it's uh, VARS, second VARS. So it's taking you into the, the distribution menu of the calculator. So I'm going to press second VARS and you can see normal CDF is number two. Okay, so I'm going to click on that and it gives me some prompts. Now, I want you to see here that next to the lower, what that's referring to is the leftmost or the lowest number in the shaded region that we have in our picture. And so that leftmost or lowest number is, we said negative 10 to the 99. That is really what your calculator has programmed in it. Now some of you, if you already have this in your calculator, you can leave it. This capital E is not the same as the capital E that you would get behind sign for instance um, it's actually the capital E that you would get right there it's the double capital E so if you pressed second comma you would get that the capital E that we're using here but I'm not going to recommend that you use that in fact I actually think that I'm just gonna do this here say okay our left bound or lower bound is going to be negative 10 raised to the 99 and and then it's asking for an upper bound, and so we would put in 0 0.25. So I'm going to enter 0 0.25 or just 0.25. Notice the mean and the standard deviation are 0 and 1. That's what we want because this is a standard normal curve. Uh, so you can go down here and hit paste. Now, the left part of this, you can't see it right now, is just the normal CDF. And so those of you who have a different calculator, you might actually have to enter it exactly like this. You might have to enter it as normal CDF and then you would have your your lower bound comma your upper bound and then your mean and your standard deviation. And so if you hit enter it gives us 0.5987. So that shaded area right there is 0 0.5987, which makes sense. And that's why we draw the picture. It makes sense that it's a little bit more than 50%. It's almost 60%. Or as another example, let me give you, find the area to the right. Let's call this example B. Example B. Let's find the area to the right of, I'll say Z is equal to 2.31. Okay, now, again, draw this picture. It's really good practice. And so if we want to draw a standard normal curve, and it has a mean of 0 and a standard, devi yeah, standard deviation of 1, then we know Z equals 2.31 is going to be it's going to be way out here because you're more than a couple standard deviations away from the mean. So if we're going for the area to the right of z equals 2.31, it's going to be this region. It's going to be going forever in that direction to the right. But you can see it's going to be a pretty small area. And so we're not expecting a big number when we enter this into the calculator. So we're going to go back into the calculator. We're going to use normal CDF. And... I'm going to say, so once again, I'm going to say second, second VARS, and normal CDF is number two. And we need to change our lower bound. Our lower bound is the same as the left bound. Our lowest number here is 2.31. So I'm going to enter a lower of 2.31. I'm going to enter an upper of, well, gosh, that's going on forever. So I want the upper to be infinity. 
but I don't use infinity. I'm going to use that 10 raised to the 99. So a lower bound and upper bound, and again, the mean of zero and the standard deviation of a sigma of, uh, of one. And so let's make these changes here. So I clear that. The lower bound is 2.31. The upper bound is 10 raised to the 99th power. The mean is zero. The standard deviation is one. And my answer, expecting a small number, and that's exactly what I get. So this number right here is 0 0.0104 going to four decimal places. So that's the tool that we're going to be using right now, this normal CDF. This is how we calculate an area underneath a, a standard normal curve, or any normal curve for that matter, and, um, and just follow the prompts when you see them in the calculator. If you have a the different setup in the calculator, then enter them as you saw here, where it was the lower bound, upper bound, mean, and standard deviation.